A joyful, more fulfilled life starts with a deep understanding of the Word of God. But it is sometimes difficult to understand what the Bible really teaches because of the many controversies surrounding its message. What do the scriptures really say and how can we gain a fuller and holistic understanding? For answers to these questions and more, join Pastor Josh Lai on the Grace Pales, the platform to grow in the accurate knowledge of the Word. Make a date with Pastor Josh Lai. Grace Pills. Know him to know you.
I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I'll see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise. And the wonder of your grace. When I see that cross, I see freedom. When I see that grave, I'll see Jesus. And from death to life, I will sing your praise. And the wonder of your grace, how my soul will sing your praise. And the wonder of your grace, how my soul will sing your praise. How wonderful, how glorious, my Savior's cars, victorious. Well, welcome once again to our broadcast for today. My name is Pastor Josh Lai. This is Curry Center International. It's always a joy and a privilege to come your way. We want to say a big thank you to God for the life of uh, Mrs. Mabel Lamte for ministering to us in song. You are a great blessing. You can listen, watch, download, subscribe, or share all my messages on Google and Apple Podcast. You can do so as well on Audio Rama and then YouTube. You can connect with me also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And for those of you who are watching on Facebook, kindly type your questions uh, right at the comment section and. I'll definitely get back to you. For those of us watching on other platforms, you can send an email to the email address on your screen, joshlai at icloud.com. We've been treating the believers love life and it's been a wonderful journey and I have been blessed and challenged as well. Um, the word of God is so definitive and this is very sublime because this is the life we are meant to live because we have the nature of the God who created us, our father. Okay, and so he has wired in us this nature of love and when we forfeit it, it rather frustrates us and make us lose focus on eternity. And that's why the believer must always make sure that they have an understanding to who they are, okay? So you go to church that each and every time your pastor will remind you of who you are, okay? Your life is meant to be a life that is giving away for others, okay? That Jesus did for you and I is exactly what you do for others. Jesus came down and he became less so that you will be great. Or he became lesser, so you will be greater. Okay, and that's exactly what love really is. Love goes down for others to go up. So you are meant to do that, and that's what actually makes your spirit rejoice, because that is the nature of God. God is love. Our theme scripture has been Ephesians chapter 5 is 1 and 2, although we started, to, we started with Philippians 1, 9 to 10. Um, we will be coming back to Philippians 1, 9 to 10, and we'll go deeper with that verse. But we've been looking at Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, uh, and we came down to what Ephesians tells us regarding our new birth. Okay, we are new species. The word schizo. We are new species, we are new breed, and we are wired like God. And so we behave like God. And we are the workmanship of God 
to do good works because that is the spirit that rules and reigns in us. Okay, so Jesus actually spoke in Matthew 5, 44 and said that this is what everybody will see and know that we are the children of God when we love, when we love. And he says that the father makes the sun shine on the just and the on just okay and, and so we have the nature of our father we don't care about who did us wrong or who did us right what is important is that we're living our nature and we keep going that's the love thing and i said it's the real deal if you look at matthew chapter 7 verse 18 like i said and that was that was, that was how i ended last week I said that jesus said a good tree can produce bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So Jesus is saying that if you are a believer, you are that good tree. You are the one that has the spirit and the nature of righteousness. Okay? Because we are created according to God's true holiness and righteousness and therefore we are wired to produce good fruit in the same way an unbeliever one who doesn't know christ cannot produce good fruit because they are they represent a bad tree okay so an unbeliever can learn all the things we are learning but it won't make them a good tree until they have received Jesus as their Savior and Lord, and then they are wired. When they receive the life, they have the nature. And then by the nature, if we give them the information, the precise, accurate knowledge, then they begin to think like God because they have the information. And then they also have the nature that actually would enable them to produce the fruit with the information they receive. Okay, so if you see an unbeliever doing good, don't think that they know love. They don't know love because the epitome of love is Christ. The example of love is Christ. If you don't know Christ, you don't know how to love. Christ gave his life. Okay, and that is the example, and we're going to actually look into that today. Can we pray? Father, we honor you once again for bringing us into fellowship one with another. Even though it's online, we honor you and we thank you. For those of us watching on television, there's no distance in the spirit, and therefore definitely you will get through to all of us in a most powerful way. Lead us, Lord, by your word. Open us up and give us insight in the name of Jesus. We shall see through your lens and not ours, no. We pray in the name of Jesus that there shall be precise, accurate division of the word. There shall be no contradictions. There shall be no errors, no. We decree in the name of Jesus that there shall be clarity of thought and clarity of understanding that your people shall hear and hear good we pray that i shall speak with clarity of expression as giving by the grace of god at the end of it all lord jesus may you be glorified and we be edified in jesus name amen and amen first john 3 8 16. 1 John 3 8 16. The believers love life. Part 5. I'm reading from the New King James Version. He who sings is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now you hear this very text used for things that are happening now. In other words, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil regarding my marriage and all of that. Well, 
you can by extension use it, but the context is very clear. It is actually talking about what Jesus did. And one thing you have to understand is that the devil has been defeated already. So he's talking about Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And that's what he did to defeat the enemy. And he's talking about the original sin. And so straight away, you must understand that he's not talking about acts of sin. He's talking about the nature of sin. Okay, which definitely deals with the acts of sin. When Jesus said that the, the, the acts is laid to the root, that was what he was talking about. That he has come to make sure that he uproots the power of sin, Satan and death. Okay, and so that's what he is talking about here. John is giving a good account. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed, the his there, is capitalized. So he's talking about Christ's seed remains in him. So whoever has been born of God does not sin for his. That is Christ's seed remains in him. And we watched already and we spoke about the word seed, techna. Which represents children. It also represents descendants. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin. Because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the, and the children of the devil are manifest. So the striking difference between the children of the devil and the children of God, the seed of God... And the seed of the enemy is that one has the spirit of righteousness. The other has the spirit of evil, the spirit of wickedness. One tilts towards doing good. And they have the right desire to do good. They have a new desire to do right. The other have a desire to always hurt, to always do evil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is he who does not love his brother. So he actually lowers it and brings it to the root. That true righteousness begins with love towards one another. <laughs> so anyone who has the seed of God in him lives the love life. Love becomes their culture. And that's how they show forth righteousness. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. So he refers us to Genesis. Anytime you hear the Bible talk about this, it is not so in the beginning, or that was not like it in the beginning. Or you heard from the beginning, he's, re, he's talking about Genesis, the book of Genesis. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. How was that message communicated? He says, and why, sorry, not as Cain, who was the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. So, Cain is referred to as wicked. Watch it. So he was personified as wicked before his works were spoken about. And so the inference is also clear that as the writer John is speaking regarding the striking difference between the unbeliever 
and the believer, he uses Cain and Abel as the case study to make us understand who is a believer and who is not. So the issue of Cain and Abel has nothing with the issue of their work. That one was producing fruit and offered fruit. And one was producing um, um, sheep and cattle or whatever. And, and then um, um, sacrificed cattle. And that's why God accepted uh, Abel's and God didn't accept uh, um, um, Cain's. No. No, the issue has to do with belief. That Cain did not believe. And therefore, he was called unrighteous. Abel believed. And he was called righteous. So it has to do with the, the, the belief thing. Believing God. So Abel received the way of salvation. <laughs> and Cain did not. And that was the difference. It also makes you understand that Adam's sin did not necessarily judge his sons. No. No. The judgment of Adam did not affect his sons. They were also given the opportunity to choose. So, if you read Romans 5 carefully, and we can go into that, but I'm just throwing it in so that it sticks. Romans 5 speaks to the fact that through Adam, Sin entered the world. So what it is is that Adam showed the doorway of sin into the end. So by Adam, we knew the pattern of sin. That sin is disobedience. Sin is unbelief. But each one of them was given the opportunity to choose. And that's how come Abel was called righteous. And if you read the hall of faith and you see the names listed, you will see Abel represented. Because Abel believed. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. So you see, he's talking about the nature of sin and he's speaking to believers. And therefore, he now includes himself and says, the world will hate you. But their hatred amounts to nothing. Why? Because we have passed from death to life. So you're, you are not that one that will say somebody hates you so you hate them back. You have passed from death to life. That's why Abel's blood speaks. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. That's not our lifestyle. We don't live a life of hate. We don't think hatred. That's not our nature. Believe you me. Maybe you think you've gone through stuff. But I have also gone through stuff. But I know the freedom 
And it's so experiential in forgiving, in letting go. It heals your spirit. Your ego may feel battered and shattered, but listen, it is the flesh speaking. It doesn't last, and it's very temporal, and it can lead to destruction. Don't allow it. The new nature is more powerful than the feelings of the old nature. You have a new source of life. God lives inside of you by the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. <laughs> By this we know love. By this we know love. Because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, if you want to reveal life, a love, sorry, you lay down your life for others. That's why we are told to love as Christ loved. So, love has a definitive feature. Love is a person. Christ is love. And love is Christ. How did Christ reveal love? He revealed love by laying down his life. So ego cannot pass the test in the love life. No, pride cannot pass the test in the love life. No, status, fame, achievements don't pass the test in the love life. They are laid down. Do you lose the memory of them? No. You don't consider them. Let this mind which was in Christ Jesus also be in you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Who was God but did not consider it? But came down. That is love. First John four, seven to ten. Dear friends, let us practice. Loving each other. So let us practice laying down our lives for one another. Esteeming one another better than ourselves. For love comes from God. And those who are loving and kind show that they are the children of God. So it is not your status that reveals your brand. <laughs> As a believer, 
It is not your position in church. It is not your calling. Nope. It's your love life. It's not how much money you have. That shows that you are a blessed man. You know, like the way you call it. If that is it, then the unbelievers are more blessed than we are. But the true color of a believer is the one that wears the color of love. It is not in your race. It's not in your tribe. <laughs> it's not in your clan. It's not in your background. It's love. It's not in your degrees. It's love. Those who are loving and kind show that they are the children of God and that they are getting to know him better. So our maturity in this Christian walk is determined by the love life. Our intimacy with God is determined by the love gauge. But if a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God. So, what it means is that you have received him, but you don't know him. He says, for God is love. Nine. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into this wicked world to bring to us eternal life through his death. And in this act, we see what real love is. So love is always seen. Love starts with an intent, but it, is all, it also goes into action. So love is revealed. Love is revealing. Love is shown. Stems from the heart. Shows on the outside. Love is action. What is the action? Stepping into the place of wickedness. Stepping into the place of hatred. Stepping into the place of rejection. Stepping into the place that is so disgusting. And revealing love. Stepping into vengeance. And revealing peace. Love doesn't say, this is what they did to me. No. It's unforgivable. No. In this act, in the act of Christ, in the crucifixion, in his death, we see love in action. We see real love. And that's why I keep saying that if you see an unbeliever showing love, they don't know love. <laughs> because the revelation of love is in the death of Christ. 
So the one that has Christ has love. And therefore they can reveal it. Because they have the nature of a love. Remember Matthew 7, 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. When you don't have the nature of a thing, you can reveal it. It's not possible. Peter said to the man at the beautiful gate, what I have, give I thee. You cannot give what you don't have. In this act, we see what real love is. It is not our love for God. Amazing. But his love for us. When he sent his son to satisfy God's anger against our sins. What a good God. So it is not our love for him. Some of us would have to start changing our songs. <laughs> it's not our love for him. No. Our love for God is revealed in our love for one another. And we're going to look into it next week. And you'll realize that there is nowhere in the Bible, sorry, in the, in the epistles, where it speaks to our love for God. Didn't you realize that when the young man who is a rich lawyer came to Jesus and, and asked about how he could, uh, who, he could be good, Jesus said, no man is good. And then he told him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. But when you come into the epistles, you realize that none of them quoted the first, loving the Lord your God with all, because Jesus has now given us the nature to do so. And we do so by loving our neighbor. The law would have to work that. But Jesus has worked that in us. And we do so by loving our neighbor. So you see them quoting the love command, the royal command, the royal law. This is what Jesus commanded. Love your neighbor. Even Jesus himself spoke to that. Love your neighbor as yourself. So John would tell us, if you say you love God, but you don't love your brother. You are a liar. Because loving God <laughs> is loving your brother. Is loving your sister. So we see clearly here that love is for sin. If there is no forgiveness of sin, there is no love. If there is no forgiveness of sin, there is no love. Let me say it again. If there is no forgiveness of sin, there is no love. And that is why our love for God is expressed to our brother and our sister. Because as for God, he doesn't offend. God is perfect. God is just. God is love. So if you say you have a love for God, it's either that God offended you and you are showing him love because in love, offense, offense rather, is revealed in love. So you can only love people when they offend you. But God doesn't offend. And so when you love your brother who has offended you, 
you have shown love to God. Because you are making use and living his nature. Look at Ephesians 4, 23 to 32. Ephesians 4, 23 to 32. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So how do we walk in this? We spoke from the beginning. The mindset. The mindset. The mindset. Renew what you knew before, put it aside and put on the new man. So be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man. <laughs> which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. When that happens, he says, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. All he's saying here is that don't let your anger last. That's why he says in 27, nor give place to the devil. Listen, that's why Christians must Think forgiveness. Let me say it again. If you are a believer, please think forgiveness. What that means is this. Before they do, you had already forgiven them. So you don't give place to anger. You can rebuke. Yes, you can rebuke. But if your mind is filled with forgiveness, your rebuke comes in love. <laughs> it doesn't come with swear words, with curse words. It doesn't come with knives and cutlasses. Words like, he doesn't know me. Oh, did you just say that? You said he doesn't know you in that negative way, but you don't know yourself. Are you having identity crisis? How are you referring to your old nature? And you are proud of that. He said, he doesn't, he doesn't know me. What I would do to him? Oh, no, that's not you. You're referring to the old man. You are a new creature. You're a new species. You are love personified. That's your nature now. That's your nature. Many people have gotten into anger and have lost so much and even lost their precious lives. There are many who have wasted their lives because of anger. But when your mind is free of offense, the offender's offense is no more an offense. Because love rules and love reigns in your heart and mind. 28. Let him who stole Steal no longer. <laughs> if you love, you won't steal. But rather let him labor, 
working with his hands what is good. Watch this. Watch this. That he may have something to give him who has need. I mean, this is what just blew me out. Now, we are talking about somebody who is in a habit of stealing. They realize who they are because they receive the precise, accurate knowledge. And so now they are judging right according to the word and the will of God. So they are walking in love. So they are asked to go and work. So the Lord will bless the works of their hands. Even before they will receive what they have. They are being admonished to understand that they are not working for themselves, but they are working for others. Amazing. This is the life we live. It's a beautiful life. Now, anytime people talk about being wealthy materially and, and financially in Christianity, I tell them that the gap is huge. It has no place in Christianity because in, in Christianity, you are a steward. So, even before you receive, you know that it's not staying with you. It's very, very deceptive where people say, oh, I'm working hard so I can give to the church. So I don't even come to church anymore. I don't have to do this anymore. We are the ones working so that when we get money, we can bring to the church. You are lying to yourself. Are you the tool or the money is the tool? If you are the container, you are the one carrying the money. And the money is the two. Tell me which one has to be prepared. Is it the money or you? When you are not well prepared and you don't have the understanding, when the money comes, you will use the money, the two, for the wrong things. So you prepare the container. The container is filled with love. And because money is currency, he will cause the money to flow where the money has to go. So you can't leave spirituality and say, I'm chasing money. It is deception. It's the trap of the enemy. There's no room for hoarding when love is at work. There's no room for hoarding when love is at work. No way. There's no room. There's no place. Twenty nine. Ephesians four. We started from the 23, we are 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good and necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve. Do not grieve. I don't know where that came from. The Holy Spirit. Where everybody now thinks that do not grieve. The Holy Spirit means don't get the Holy Spirit angry. Because the word grieve there is the word sad or sorrow. 
When we don't live the love life, we're saddening our true nature. That's it. Because we are born to love. So when you're born again to love and you don't live the love life, then your nature is not working. And so the Holy Spirit is saddened. So he said, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay? Let all bitterness. Do you get the point? So, this is what makes the Holy Spirit sad. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So allow the Holy Spirit to work and live its nature in you. That's why 32 tells us, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Praise God. Praise God. So where does it take us? It takes us back. Watch this. The next verse. We just read Ephesians 4.32. What's the next verse? Be ye therefore imitators of God. (laughs) As dear children. Walk in love. As Christ has loved you and has given himself an offering as a sweet smelling savor. So you see, we are back to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. For all that he said, he said, so imitate God in the love for which he has loved you. Praise God. Let's finish it off. First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. The chapter of love. The chapter of love. We are reading from verse 2 to 3. And though I have the gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith. So that I could remove mountains but have not love. I am nothing. 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 That's why 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 9 speaks about faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness and said add brotherly kindness and love. So you can have all of these things if you don't have brotherly kindness and love. Your godliness is questionable. That's what he's saying here. I am nothing. In other words, you don't count. You have lost your value. You have lost your worth. The worth of a believer is his love. It's a love life. Three. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. 
It profits me nothing. The word it profits me nothing is the word ophilomai. Ophilomai. It profits me nothing. O P H E L E. O P H E L O U M A I. Ophilomai. It profits me nothing. In other words, it will not count. It will not count. So every work done not out of love won't count. So number one, if you show forth everything without love, whatever you are doing, you yourself, you have lost your value. You have lost your worth. And if you give stuff and you are not giving them out of love, he says, it doesn't count. In other words, on the day of judgment where we are to receive rewards, you will lose out on your reward. Because the judgment is based on love. First Corinthians 13. Let's continue. 4 to 8. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Oh, brother, how did it go? I did it. Oh, no, you didn't do it. <laughs> he did it through you, my dear. Or oh, you say, by the grace of God, but in your heart. They're just pumping yourself. No. Love is not puffed up. In other words, love is not arrogant. Love does not behave rudely. Amazing. Love does not seek its own. Woo. So, sometimes I wonder where we got some of these. And it's amazing. They are called wisdom nuggets. Wisdom nuggets. Where we say things like, go where you are celebrated. Not where you are Tolerated. Really. So what it means, now every believer has become a celebrity. <laughs> every believer now is a star. But do you know the real definition of stars? Stars. Step into the night and they make the difference in the night. <laughs> they step into the places they are tolerated, but they win with love. They step into sin, but they win with love. They step into people that everybody says they are disgusting. But they win with love. Stars step into the night. And they bring light all over the place. That's the life we have been called to live. Jesus said, they hated me, your master. They will hate you. So he's asked us to go. He said, I've sent you as wolf, as sheep, um, sheep, sorry, among wolves. So how dare you say that we should only go where we are celebrated? Really? No. These are motivational speeches for the world. This is unchristian. 
Love wins over hate. We'll go into some of those. Let's continue. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. I like this one. Love thinks no evil. The word thinks no evil actually is saying love does not keep a record of wrong. <laughs> it is rendered in these Bible versions as follows. In the Amplified, it said, love does not take account of suffered wrong. In the ASV, love does not take account of evil. In the CEV, it says, love does not keep record of complaints. The CJV, love does not keep record of wrong. I like the Darby, D-A-R-B-Y translation. He says, love does not impute evil. Yeah. So what it means is that he, he has actually even made it so clear. The point is, he doesn't charge you with it. And so there's no need to even remember it. So it's not like he charges with you and cleans and wipes it. No. He doesn't even charge you with it. So there's no memory of sin. The GW says, love does not keep track of wrong. He's talking about love who is the person. Jesus. Hebrews 10, 17 speaks to this. Then he adds, they are sins. They are lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Praise God. So that's the way Christ loved us. And Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 is talking about the pressing of love. How Christ loves. Which is the more excellent way. If you read the, uh, the 12. That's how he ends it. When he was talking about converting spiritual gifts. He said we should convert the very best. And then he says. He talks about love. Which is the more excellent way. They are sins and they are lawless deeds I will remember no more. I will remember no more. If somebody reminds you of your sin, they are the only ones who are remembering them. Christ forgave you. He doesn't even remember it. Your plate is always clean. Your sheet is always clean cling before him. Christ has done the work. Somebody tells you God is angry with you, tell them they don't know God. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, six, but rejoices in the truth. Seven, love bears all things. Love believes all things. I'll come to that. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. Whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, they will fail. They will cease. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish away. He said, love believes all things. In other words, the love believes 
the best can come out of all things. <laughs> Love believes the worst person can become the best. They see the best in everybody. That's how love sees. I hear a preacher preach. I said, people don't change. And he's preaching. So, so why are we preaching? If people don't change, then why are we preaching? <laughs> what does the gospel do? And how did we become preachers? The power of the gospel. Love believes the best can come out of everybody. Love believes the best of people and the best in people. Don't ever believe the worst of people. Never. Never give up on people. Never give up, give up on anybody. If this love nature is in you, believe the best for everybody. Because everybody deserves the best. First Timothy 1, 11, I'm 15 and I'm done. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. This is Apostle Paul using himself as, as a case study. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but... I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. The gift of faith and the gift of love which is in Christ Jesus. Oh my word. That is what saved me. I didn't have to do any work. 15. This is a faithful saying. And worthy of acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This is the testimony of Apostle Paul. This is how he said love found him. I have the same testimony. If you are a believer, you have the same testimony. This nature of love by the gift of faith giving us, let's go out and show it to the world and to anybody that we find ourselves to encounter. This is our love. This is our life. This is our culture. I get to see you again next week. Until then, you are that believer. Continue to live the love life. That is where the fragrance is and your beauty shines forth with that. It is a glorious life. It is a glorious living. You are that graceful new breed of a creature. I love you because Jesus loves you more. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.